still sleep. Okay, so I, I just hope uh, now I will not have any internet issues. I was in Karachi till yesterday, so and and I had to spend all day on uh, the airport, and um, my flight was horribly, horribly delayed. Um, so this morning when I took my uh, class with O, o levels, um, I was all now I'm active. Okay. G. G. I'll be sharing the source video. Um, I could have shared that video yesterday and posted it in your. Ma'am, my internet is fine. Okay. okay. My internet is fine. Okay. Your internet is. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Doesn't matter, Ariba. If uh, there is any trouble, you can always listen to the lesson on Google Classroom, okay? Okay, fine. Um, the the, the pro problem with that resource video is that um, halfway through the lesson, the lady starts um, using a lot of Urdu. And I do not like, um, you know, explaining things or typing things in Urdu a lot. Okay? I believe that we should explain things in English so that um, the English language skills are improved. Okay? I will post that with you uh, just in case you need to better- Excuse me, ma'am. Content. Yes, Ariba. Ma'am, I have rejoined that first your voice was lacking. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my internet issue. Probably there's something wrong with um, on my side. I'm trying my best. I've opened up my door. I am trying my best to um, make sure um, the internet issue is. Now I have rejoined. Okay, fine. Okay. Please make sure those of you who join us, please make sure your. Um... Ma'am, again. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, fine. Ariba, I, I'd appreciate. I'd appreciate if you would uh, let me continue with my lesson. Take care, sweetie. If you think um, um, there is trouble, I'd appreciate you take the class on Google Classroom. Take care. Please do not interrupt. Let me let me quickly um, catch up with the lesson. Those of you who have just joined, please make sure that you mark your attendance. Yes. Um, in today's lesson, we will be um, looking at report two. Uh, NASA humbled as sun catchers drop ball. Um, while we um, study, uh, we will notice how the use of different um, idiomatic expressions in the text as well. Okay. Now, the first expression is sun catchers. By the word sun catchers, can you guess who are we referring to? The astronaut. The astronauts. Guess again. Refer, please refer to the previous previous report. Who do you think the sun catchers could refer to? Sun catchers drop ball. Who was supposed to uh, grab the ball, scoop the ball, swoop the ball in report one? Can I have an answer, please? From report one, who was supposed to uh, grasp the ball? Which ball are we talking about? Number one, let's identify what do we mean by the word ball? Ball means the probe that was coming down with samples from the sun, sun rays. So who was supposed to catch this probe? Who was supposed to catch this uh, probe? The stunt pilots? Ma'am, your voice is lacking. I can hear you clear. What you no, ma'am, we can hear you clearly. Okay, fine. Uh, Ariba, I'd appreciate bitte, um, either check your internet connection because I am, um, my internet is on fiber optic and it doesn't give me any trouble, TK. Okay? All right. Um, from the title, 
NASA humbled as sun catchers drop ball. The ball by the word ball, we mean the probe which was supposed to bring um, the samples from the sun rays with it. Sun catchers are the um, stunt pilot. Why sun catchers? Because the probe was bringing um, samples from the sun's rays with it. Okay. And um, also because the pilots, they fly into the sun. That's why. And humbled. Ma'am, we can hear you clear. Ariba, I'd appreciate if you would let me continue with my lesson, my dear. Humbled means that they are embarrassed. Ma'am? Yes, dear. Ma'am, your voice is not clear. Ariba. I can't hear you what you are saying ma'am but we can hear you clearly i think it's a network connection with her voice Okay, fine. They were known as the sun catchers with a typical lack of modesty. Uh, they were known as the sun catchers. Who were known as the sun catchers? Again, the Hollywood stunt pilots. Ariba, please. Ma'am. Ma'am, your voice is not clear. With a typical lack of modesty, two veteran helico uh, Hollywood helicopter pilots lifted off from the Utah desert yesterday as part of a daredevil mission to catch a NASA space probe as it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere at 24,700 miles per hour. Take it. Again, um, remember we told you, I told you earlier on as well, report one was based on the rehearsals of, the, um, of how the stunt pilots will catch the probe. Report two is going to give you details of the real event, okay, of how the action really took place, how the probe, the original probe, remember in report one, we had the dummy capsule over here, we have the real thing which has actually come from outer space. They were rehearsing with the dummy now the real action is taking place. What I will do again is I will show you um, midway. I'll try and show you the real uh, video of uh, the action. Okay? Um, as it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere at 24,700 miles per hour. But the mission, which cost more than $140 million, went horribly wrong. Report one uh, showed us that the stunt pilots were continuously rehearsing and Fleming, one of the uh, two stunt men, uh, stunt pilots, he was able to catch the probe on every attempt. But when the action went live, when the real action took place, what happened? Everything went horribly wrong. What happened? That's what we are about to see. And unlike in the films, no amount of special effects could save it. Nothing. There were no special effects that could um, amend the mistake that happened. Civilian stunt pilots, earlier on, what were they calling, calling them? Hollywood stunt pilots, whom they believed in strongly that they can do it. And because they were doing it perfectly in every rehearsal, they were, the report said, action, they're all set. Now they're making, um, uh, using the word civilian over here is sort of a slight, it is a slight insult. Okay. It was the mission of the lifetime. And in spite of their work in recent blockbusters, they could barely hide their excitement as they swaggered towards their helicopters at dawn yesterday. Now, what was their recent blockbuster? The recent blockbuster was told in paragraph one. 
where we get to know that they had worked in Star Wars 4. Okay? Star Trek 4 or Star Wars 4? Mm. Okay. They could barely hide their excitement as they swaggered towards this. Swaggered. What kind of a way is swaggering? Can someone look it up in the dictionary? Uh, if you swagger to something, it's like you walk somewhere with confidence. Yeah. And it's more of slang than actual English. Exactly. But yeah. Exactly. Swaggered is colloquial. Swaggered is the slang way of saying that someone is walking with confidence, um, like um, to, towards something with a lot of confidence. Like basically, when you walk in an overconfident way, because why were the um, two um, helicopter pilots um, uh, swaggering? Because they were confident. Uh, during the rehearsals, they hadn't made a mistake. So they were confident that they will be able to, um, you know, um, perform very well today. But on the other hand, the um, news report calls them civilian now, which is a slight insult. Um, in, now they're saying that instead of hiring professionals, NASA hired civilian pilots. Um, the plane which had been carefully rehearsed over the, the, pl the plan which had been not plain but the plan which had been care carefully rehearsed over several years was to snag this yes was to snag the returning space capsule with 20 feet hooks welded onto the underbellies of their helicopters. They would then lower it gently to Earth. Okay, snag means to capture. It is a different way of capturing. When you capture something with a hook, it is called snagging. At first, everything went exactly as scripted. Scripted as planned. Script is when you write something for a play. So whatever dialogues you will deliver, they will be um, delivered as, um, you know, um, as the script says. So over here, they're saying, they're comparing the action with that of a movie script. At first, everything went exactly as scripted, as planned. We've got a visual. We've got a visual is again a slang uh, statement. It's a colloquial statement, uh, meaning that, um, and this is something that, um, you know, when once you're working in NASA, this is something that um, uh, they normally, uh, a phrase which they normally use once they identify um, the, um, the vehicle or any satellite or any um, object which needs to be identified. We've got a visual means. We have spotted the probe entering the, um, the, the atmosphere of the Earth. We've got a visual, said the voice from mission control, and a loud cheer filled the aircraft hangar at Utah Dugway military base. Now, how can a loud cheer fill the hangar? Hangar is, by the way, a place where aircrafts are kept safely inside. For example, for, for cars, we have a garage where you park the cars. Hangar is where you park the aircrafts, okay? You keep them safe inside a hangar. Now there is a hangar at Utah Dugway military base, which is full of people. Um, these are family and friends of uh, the pilots, of the people participating in the stunt mission and um, other, there are um, also, there are people in, um, you know, participating in the space mission. So once they receive a visual, a visual of what? Once they spot the probe entering the Earth's atmosphere, um, the person on the mission control announces the visual. And um, once it is captured on camera, everybody who is sitting in the aircraft hangar is full of cheer and they cheer loudly. They're full of, they're happy, so they cheer loudly. 
the elation was understandable. Elation, excitement. The elation was understandable to the NASA engineers and pilots assembled in the hangar along with their friends and family. Again, the loud cheer comes from all the pilots and friends and family who were assembled at the hangar. This was a sensational comeback for the troubled space agency. Why, which space agency are we talking about? We're talking about NASA. Why is NASA troubled? They're going to give you in this upcoming statement, okay? So this mission of catching the probe is very important for NASA. Why? Because it was in, NASA was in trouble. Now, why was NASA in trouble? It had, after all, endured stinging criticism after the 2003 Columbia Space Shuttle disaster. Um, stinging criticism, heavily criticized. NASA was heavily criticized. Why? Because in the year 2003, another space um, shuttle by the name of Columbia met a disaster. Um, there are uh, uh, pic pic pictures and videos of Columbia as well. Uh, once it entered um, this, uh, the Earth's atmosphere, it disintegrated, it opened up, and before it could land on Earth, it blasted off up in the sky, uh, within the Earth's atmosphere. There was no chance to even grab it. Once it entered the Earth's atmosphere, um, it just disintegrated. It just, um, just just ripped apart all 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 of it. Okay, so whatever data it had brought with it, uh, it was all lost. And because each space mission costs in millions, so um, NASA received heavy criticism from all sorts of uh, people. Okay, because a lot of money, a lot of budget, a lot of, a lot of finance was allocated for the, um, for the mission and NASA failed. Hence, they were heavily criticized by the defense system, by the government, by the people, by the newspaper agencies. Yes, darling. Mama, I feel, I feel like I'm going to Right on. I hope there was one point and I think I have missed it. I had to explain something, okay. Then onto huge cinema screens erected by NASA, the space capsule appeared. A tiny, now they're going to explain um, the, uh, the appearance and later on uh, how it was all, uh, the whole action happened, ticket. Then onto huge cinema screens erected by NASA, the space capsule appeared, a tiny glinting speck spinning violently as it re-entered Earth's atmosphere, spinning violently, heavily spinning, um, not in a proper spiral, but very um, heavily, um, in, a, in a very aggressive manner. The message behind the image was clear, only NASA could do it, that is no, Hollywood stuntmen will be able to, oh, oh, sorry, only NASA can bring a piece of earth into the earth, or a piece of, piece of sun into earth. We are bringing a piece of sun to earth, said Charles Ilachi, director of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory from that particular uh, department of NASA. Now, here you can see a satellite uh, um, in the picture, probes are further, and if you can see, if you can spot, these are tiny probes attached. Can you see these balls? These are basically small probes which are attached to, um, and even over here, they, they are, these are probes attached to uh, the um, satellite, okay, which are helpful in capturing uh, data or samples. The 452 pound capsule released from NASA's Genesis spacecraft contained sample of solar wind, the matter from which the universe was created. Scientists hoped the stardust dust would help explain why life exists on Earth, but the joy soon turned to horror. 
instead of the capsule's parachutes opening, which would have slowed the pod to just 25 miles per hour, it continued to plume, twisting and turning in the wind. The capsule smashed into the ground at the catastrophic speed of 193 miles per hour, forming a blackened smoldering crater 30 miles from the base. Now, within this one paragraph, the whole situation, the whole scenario has been explained how the whole mission failed. Now, first off, they're telling you the weight of the capsule. It was five, 452 pounds, LB pounds. It, the, the space mission was Genesis. From the space, space mission Genesis comes this probe, which was entering the earth and it contained the sample of solar wind, the matter from which the universe was created. Earlier on in previous uh, report, what was the word that we used? It was, uh, just a minute, the word was, uh, okay, I've forgotten the word, doesn't matter. It's okay, I'll let you know later. Okay, now what happened um, instead of, uh, if you remember in report one, uh, it said that the capsule will enter the Earth's um, atmosphere at 24,000 miles per hour. Its parachutes are going to open up, which are help, which are going to help its speed, uh, which are help, going to help control its speed. Sophia, I'm having a class right now. Can you please leave? Thank you very much. Um, so um, from 24,000 miles per hour, once the parachutes are going to open, they're going to reduce the speed to 20 miles per hour, which is going to be slow enough for the um, Hollywood stunt pilots to capture the uh, probe. Now, unfortunately, the parachutes did not open, which means that uh, the speed was not controlled because there was nothing to grab onto, because there was no way the hook could, um, you know, um, you know cl click on to the probe. The probe continued to plume. Plume means to fall, twisting and turning in the wind. And the, it just continued to fall and fall and fall, descend until what happened? It smashed into the ground. It hit the ground at a catastrophic speed, at a disastrous speed of 193 miles per hour. And what happened as a result? There was it, it, um, a crater. Oh, wait. A crater was a 30 mile crater. Oh, sorry, a 30 mile deep crater was formed. That crater was blackened and it was smoldering. Blackened because of the um, impact small, uh, um, and smoldering, it had a little fire in it. Because of fire, the area around was also blackened, obviously charred. Another word you can use is charred. Uh, if, even if I take a few minutes extra, the thing is, I'd like to complete um, the report writing, uh, this report today, so that we can move up to its um, question answers on Monday, okay? I'd like to give you your uh, vocabulary task today. That is why I'd like to finish the lesson as quickly as possible within today's session. Take care. Please bear with me. We have impact, said the voice from the mission control in California at the Dugway military base. There was silence a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago, the Dugway military base was full of loud cheer. Now suddenly what has happened? There's complete silence. We have impact. We have impact means that the object has hit the ground. We have impact, said the voice from mission control in California. At the Dugway military base, there was silence then groans and sniffs as tears were stifled. Stifled, they were trying to, um, you know, stop themselves from crying. The mission had failed. 
I think that the space business has humbled us, said Feroz Nadri, head of NASA's exploration program. The main concern is whether or not we have contamination of the capsule, he said, adding that it would be technically possible to reassemble the samples um, inside if they re remained intact. If the samples are beyond repair, NASA will have to wait until the next space capsule due in January 2006 to unlock the secrets of the universe. We will have to figure out what went wrong and recover from it. For NASA, the failure is nothing short of catastrophic as the space agency is still reeling from 2003's Columbia space, space crash. The lesson perhaps is that no amount of Hollywood glamour can save a risky space mission from reality, something of which the sun catchers were only too aware as they watched helplessly while the capsule shot past them and crashed into Earth. Now, what I want to do is I would like to share a video of this whole scenario with you guys. Just give me a second. Oh, no, no, no. What was uh, yesterday's topic? Wait, it was stunt pilots swoop. Yes. Here it is. And if you can come right with the nose so you're lined up with the number one. Oh, that is the. No, it was Can you hear? It just made it uh, across. Uh, it's now over Oregon and. And the mission manager, MTC, be advised. Uh, Here you can see the probe falling from the sky. You can see how violently it is. Um, at down. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll show you again. It has just made it. Nevada, I should say. Number one. Are, sorry, here are the two Nevada, I should say. stunt pilots. Actually, the drogue is not out yet. Oh, that is the... No, it, we're still... It has just made it... Uh, Everything is happy. It's now over you, Oregon. You see and the space mission people happy. And the mission manager, MTC, be advised uh, from our vantage point, we do not see a drogue shoot. Negative drogue. Hangar at... This is the hangar. Dugway. Where the family and friends are sitting. Go, Mark. It looks like we have a no shoot, sir. Vector two zero zero. Put it on your nose. Eight miles. Look for an impact. PC, uh, negative see? Probe. He says negative we have probe. a visual. Can you see how Copy. violent the, uh, the probe is hit, uh, coming down? Copy and you saw how suddenly it. I'll show it again. Miles. Look for an impact. PC, uh, negative probe. Negative zero. shoot. And one, two, Copy. three. One, two, three. It has hit the ground. Copy your last. Eight miles. Do you have an altitude? Impact. And we have a, a good there is an impact, sir. The, Can you uh, see how a crater is formed? There is a crater, surface. everything is blackened, and you could see something smoldering. Now, here it is. The probe has hit the ground, and it has formed a crater in the ground. The helicopter comes I copy. Down. We also have a visual of uh, Oscar uh, attempting a landing. we can uh, to recover science uh, from the capsule, uh, but uh, the capsule obviously wasn't designed to uh, withstand. You see how it has okay, disengaged? Everybody is sad. These are the people from NASA. This is how. This is now um, the recreated animated version of the uh, whole. This is what was supposed to happen. 
It was supposed to come down. A parachute should have opened. This would have stopped, you know, decreased the speed. The stunt pilots would come in, swoop it, snag it. And this, now, all of this animation is what was supposed to happen, which did not, simply because the parachute did not open. Okay. I do hope the video was helpful and you understood the concept. What are the date well. ranks? Okay. Uh, yeah, I understood it. Oh, Grammarly helps you communicate Anybody, smarter, um, I, one message at a time. As you okay. With that, we come to the end of our lesson. Ariba, I request again that you please view the lesson on Google Classroom, TK? Because as far as my side is concerned, I have good um, internet connectivity. And a majority of the students, they kept saying that we did not have any trouble listening to my voice, TK? So please have a look at the lesson on Google Classroom. With that, we come to the end of our today's lesson. Thank you so very much. Um, I'll post what you have to do on um, Google Classroom. Okay, fine. Ma at max, I will only ask you to um, do the activity exercise. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll be posting your uh, lesson in around 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Ma'am, I just got an AC in my room. <laughs>